Hello viewers, this is Apurva Singh and I hope you are staying safe at your homes. So today in this video we are going to learn a new poem that is After Blenheim written by Robert Saude. So Robert Saude is linked with the poets of well-known romantic movement in English literature of which William Wordsworth was the pioneer. He remained the poet laureate in England for 30 years from the year 1813 till his death in 1843. In After Blenheim, he brings out the horrors of war in simple but in ironic way. The battle called the war caused great destruction and ruin in the village, in the village of Blenheim. The battle was fought in 1704 in this village between English and Austrian on one side and on the other side there were French people. The battle resulted in a grand victory of English under Duke Marlborough. The basic theme of the poem is the horrors of war and generation gap. When I say horrors of war, that means here in the poem, the poet has showcased in an ironic way that how war only brings ruin, fruitlessness, how senseless it is and how destructive in nature the war is for everybody. There is no real winners in the war, so there is nothing to glorify about war. So, this is an anti-war poem. Now, when I talk about generation gap, I talk about generation gap because in the poem we will find an old grandfather, the old Casper, talking to his two young children, to his two young grandchildren. And we will see that how Casper, he sticks to his old and conventional, unprogressive and unproductive thoughts and how he sticks to the glory of war. And we will see that how innocently and how instinctive these two young children were. And this old grandfather, he could not give answer to the questions of these young children. So this is how the poet here has showcased that even the old man, he did not glorify war, but he always was sticking to the old conventions of war. And he kept on just saying this, that it was a grand victory. The war was grand and it was the grand victory of the English people. And he took pride on it. So let us see that what the poet has written in between the lines. So, it was a summer evening, old Casper, work was done. So, we see that it is the summer evening time, the ambience is of summer evening time and we see old Casper has already done all his work and he is relaxing. And he, before his cottage door, was sitting in the sun. So, this man, he was sitting by the side at the threshold of his cottage under the sun. So the rhyming scheme here is A, B, C, B. The rhyming scheme is A, B, C, B. And by him spotted on the green his little grandchild, Belmai. And on the green field, which was just in front of the cottage, was there the young girl, his little grandchild, Belmai. So here the situation described is very common. And it is familiar also and nothing spectacular is being talked about. It is the normal life of any grandfather and of grandchildren during the evening summer times, during the evening summer days. So, moving ahead. She saw her brother Peterkins. So, well mind, she saw her brother Peterkins roll something large and round. So, he was bringing something large and something round and it was, he was rolling it towards them which he beside the rivulet in playing there had found. So where did he find that uh, round ball? He found it near the rivulet where he was playing. He came to ask what he had found that was so large, smooth and round. So he came to ask from his grandfather out of his curiosity, he got that round thing near his grandfather just to understand that what this round thing was. Old Casper took it from the boy who stood expectant by. So expectant that means he was waiting for the answer from the grandfather that what this round thing is. And then the old man shook his head. So the old man he just shook his head and maybe he was uh, shaking his head because of sigh and of sorrow. And with a natural sigh 
it's some poor fellow's skull he said so he said that it may be some of the poor fellow's skull so whose skull it would be the people who were part who would have participated in the war the soldiers who were martyred in this war it would be the skull of those men of those soldiers who fell in the great victory so he also says that it would be the skull of that man who must have fell who must have died during that great victorious war i find them in the garden for there's many here about so he says that whenever he goes out in the garden to plow the field he finds many of these skulls in it when he turns over the ground and often when i go to plow the plowshare turns them out so often when he goes out he sees that the plowshare it turns out the skulls which are under which are buried under the ground for many thousand men said he were slain in that victory in the great victory so he says that thousand of men were killed during that victorious war during that great victory so it was the english people who won the war and he belonged to the side of the english people that is why he takes pride and he every time adjectifies the war as something which was very great now tell us what it was all about so these children they were very curious to know everything about this war so they asked their grandfather that tell us that what was it all about young peter kings he cries and little when mine looks up with wonder waiting eyes so even the little child the girl the girl child even she was very curious now tell us all about the war and what they fought each other for so they wanted to know the reason that what was the reason behind this war so they asked they tell us everything about the war and tell us this also that why did they fight with each other what was the reason behind it so these anxious children they wanted to know everything each and everything which led to this victorious war it was the english casper cried who put the french to rot so it was the english who defeated the french people this is what casper told them but what they fought each other for i could not well make out so see how ironical it is that there was a war going on and both the sides they were fighting with each other but the reason of the war nobody could make out the reason wasn't clear that what was the reason behind this war i could not well make out but everybody said quoth he that it was a famous victory so he says that i could not make out the reason of the war but yes i have heard everybody saying that it was a famous victory so it is clear that the response of this old casper tells us that he was just sticking to the conventional thoughts conventional a uh, logics behind the war he did not support it it was not his own view point that the war was famous the war was great it was the conventional it was the old thought which was being um there in his mind my father lived at blenheim then so the old man he talks about his father that he lived in blenheim during the time when this war took place your little stream had by they burned his dwelling to the ground so the dwelling that is the houses they were burned to down and he was forced to fly that means he was forced to save his life to escape from that particular area where this war took place so with his wife and child he fled nor had he where to rest his head so unfortunately he had to flee away from that area where he used to reside but he could not understand that where should he go to save himself and his children so old casper is talking about his father so this was the condition during the war the destruction was at its peak and the all the livelihoods were disturbed with fire and sword the country round was wasted far and wide so the fire and the sword it wasted the whole country side and it was war, it was a war which was wide that means it was a long war and the war it destructed a larger area 
and many a childing. Mother then and newborn babies die. So the mothers who were expecting to have kids, to have children, even she died and there were many newborn children who also died during that war. But things like that, you know, must be at every famous war. So here very ironically, he says that yes, such things it happens when it is a famous war. So any famous war in the history must have seen this heartless sights, which here Casper is describing about. They say it was a shocking sight. So shocking sight, that means it was a ghastly sight. After the field was won, that is after the battle was won, for many thousand bodies were lay rotting in the sun. So many dead bodies were left to rotten, to decay under the sun. But things like that, you know, must be after a famous war. So again, he repeats that, you know, such things often happen in every famous war. Great praise the Duke of Melborough won. So he was the English commander, the English Duke under whom the war was won. And our good Prince Eugene, why it was very wicked thing. So the little girl, she says here that no, why are you glorifying it? It is a something which is very wicked. You should not say like this, that the war was famous, the war was great. Said little Belmine. Nay, nay, my little girl, quoth he, it was a famous victory. So the old man, he very weakly asserts that no, no, my dear little child, it was a famous victory. And everybody praised the Duke who this great fight did win. And everybody during that time praised the Duke for winning the war for the English men. But what good came of it at last? So it is a very innocent question which was being asked by Peter Kings, the, the young child. And he says that what good did we receive in the end after the war? So again here also the poet is trying to highlight and trying to underline the destructive side of the war. That means even in the winnings we have losses. No matter the English people, they won the war. But in that winning, they have lost, they have destructed their own people and their own lives. Why that I cannot tell, said he, but was a famous victory. So he says that, see, I cannot tell you that what did we win at the end. But yes, I can only tell you this, that it was a famous war. So the poem, the poet here is basically condemning the blind patriotism in the poem and he castigates all the war which only brings out horror, death and destruction. So as I already told you that it is the poem has an opening, open ending, I stick to my own words that it has an open ending. It is on to you that how you see the wars, whether you glorify war or you reject war, it is on to you. The repercussions you will see if you glorify the war and the benefits you will see if you reject the war. Thank you very much. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, like, share and comment.